scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. What is favor? Men investing their time, credibility, and resources to help you achieve your goals. What is favor? Men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down i had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day I was inspired and I wrote it down about grace. Just pay attention as I, list, as I read. Grace, as understood by many, is seen as unmerited access. Listen to me. This very confusion, exaggeration, over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion and exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me I'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from God in Christ. In other words, the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited, but it is also anything that comes from God. Are we together now? It is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality, a provision, a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from God and only in and through Christ now listen I wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the Holy Spirit okay this is me writing permit me I'm reading as I just wrote directly this morning the Holy Spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace I have ever heard and known and I'll tell you what the Holy Spirit told me about grace ready James 1 17 
this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 this is the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access <clears throat> grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action 
rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um were captured in the judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today your partnership towards making promises manifest is what i call works your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works we need to define this because i'm going to be playing around with these words and um it's important that all of us when you hear it you know what i'm saying number what now let's hurry up i will rush now number six excellence let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right 
Number eight, relationships. What are relationships? Write this down. Relationships are advantageous connections. Simple. Relationships are advantageous connections. Broadly speaking, connections. But with respect to what we are dealing with, advantageous connections. Everyone say advantageous connections. Say it inside and outside. Advantageous connections. Write this down. Usually mutually beneficial. Usually mutually beneficial. So we are talking about advantageous connections. This is my definition. That is usually mutually beneficial. That means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit. Relationships can be both divine and human. Write it down. Relationships can be both divine and human. It is possible to have a relationship with God. It's possible to have a relationship with Satan. It's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit. It's possible to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Advantageous connections. Number nine. Knowledge. What is knowledge? Thank you, Jesus. What is knowledge? The gathering or acquisition of information. The gathering or acquisition of information or facts. That's called knowledge. The gathering or acquisition of information, facts, is called knowledge. Many of you are tired of writing. That's the secret to your peace. Just keep writing. What is knowledge? Awareness of familiarity. What is knowledge? Awareness of familiarity that is gained through education or experience. What is knowledge again? Awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education. Can I continue? Number 10, understanding. The 10th terminology we are defining understanding. What is understanding? Comprehension. Comprehension. In one word, understanding is comprehension. Eleven, wisdom. We are almost there. Eleven, wisdom. Correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge. Write it down. Wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. Also refers to the accurate application of knowledge. When knowledge is applied accurately and correctly, it's called wisdom. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm imagining? I'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say, Apostle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, look, you will be too blessed to do it. Even if you don't like me, you will do it. You will turn back. One day I'll come to your house and when others are languishing, I will see you together with your children giving God praise and say today is a day off. We are just worshipping and blessing his name. And people will say, are you in Nigeria? You say, no, I, I, I'm only here, but we, 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 we sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order. Remember, I used to say this thing years ago. Believe it, oh. Believe it. I imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying, Mama, I know you did not make it in this life, but I have a surprise. Cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say, Mama, the car you did not drive, this is it. Let the devil do anything he would do. 
Do you think your mother will be happy? You are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members' clothes because of rent. I must kill you now. How much? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes, he's there. God bless you. Not alone. I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching and say, this is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12 prosperity let's define prosperity what does it mean to prosper it means to do well quickly please prosperity means to do well prosperity means to excel prosperity means to flourish prosperity means to thrive it means to do well it means to excel it means to flourish it means to thrive that's what it means to prosper two more definitions and we're there number 13 goals g-o-a-l-s goals what are goals clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes what are goals clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes 14 the last word value v-a-l-u-e value what is the definition of value write it down point of difference what is the definition of value point of difference Another definition, your uniqueness. Another definition, your skill. So what is value? Your point of difference. Your uniqueness. Your skill. Write this down under value. Everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God is called value. I repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying god is called value Take a deep breath. You have tried. You have been writing. Some of you, that's a key to drive laziness. You've not done this in a long time. I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many. I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight. I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain. Listen, I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church, your ministry, your group excel or fail. I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become. Write this down. Success is predictable. I don't need to see your results. To know whether you will be successful success is predictable now i can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed there are people i look at their lives and i know they will fail it's a very sad truth they will be offended and they will think he's are you god and then you see that you really failed Failure is also predictable. Write it down. 
so success is predictable semicolon failure is also predictable i can look at your life brothers and sisters and i can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior you are going to be a very great word addict but i know that as far as success is concerned you may not be very successful i can look at your life and i know that you are going to be a very rich man you will buy the jets and the rolls royces but you will never be a spiritual man i can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price i can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man i can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came You know, years ago, as I began to pursue the things of the Spirit, I stumbled across materials that taught on this. I folded them with speed and threw them one side. I said, look, let me press on this. How foolish I was. Imagine that I came for Koinonia now. And after preaching a powerful message, I now tell you, all of you, you are going to sow. My mind is not stable. I'm, I need, I need, you have to pay my rent. I'm blessing you. The Bible says A and B and C. Everybody stand up. Worship team, you are bringing 50,000. Prayer band, you are bringing 1 million. <laughs> Benga, <laughs> you are not praying for nothing. 1 million. Leaders, you are bringing 2 million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you. Yes. It will never happen in this ministry. Where I will say, please, raise offering for me so that I can eat well. No. You know what we call escape velocity in physics? Where you have gone past certain things. It's not pride. It will never happen again till Jesus comes. I found my way to better days. I found my way to better days. For many of you tonight, you're on your way to better days. Let them laugh at you. You're on your way to better days. Status is to yourself. for one minute and say lord i am truly changing i'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery 
there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain. There is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place. There is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact, a life of dignity, a life of beauty, a life of peace, a life of glory. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we've had all the peripherals. Please listen, I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission, but there was no money to pay it. For some of you, is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat. For some of you, is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success. For some of you, there are men of God probably listening to me. You have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection. Listen, if you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. If you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. When I look at people who say, God forbid, over my dead body, I will never do this and that. I tell them, keep quiet. You don't know the pressure that failure forces people. Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you will do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia. Years ago, when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand its success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father I think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded I, I don't know if it was whatever it is but it was a very serious issue and the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief bottom bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me, she said the boss looked at her own mother and said, you are not a, a small girl, you know what to do. If you want to raise someone's mother, matured lady, you know what to do. And the mother initially refused. But when she went to meet the father, the situation, the pressure was overwhelming. Both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man. Now, yeah, I know you are, we, are, we have, we can shout in church, ah, I won't do it. Don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot. When somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night, he never planned it. That's what pressure me. When the girl told me that, do you know what happened? Do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me i said oh god what is this we are here jumping in church saying since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken that is such a lie i've seen many righteous people forsaken oh i've seen many of their seed beg for bread we sing it by faith and i believe it but i have seen many righteous people such as our parents such as your brother and your sister, you know them, they love God, they have been dejected and forsaken. They forsook loves and good things left them. Success is predictable. Failure is predictable. You can make up your mind from today that you are going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success 
you can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in in a way and a dimension that you have never seen to obey these laws and excel let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight ready the laws of success thank you jesus ready the first law of success the law of relationships write it down the law of relationships ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm everybody say the law of relationships shout it the law of write this down success is highly relationship dependent Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent. Number two, everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Write it down. Everything, I don't care what it is, anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it money can buy a house relationships can buy a house money can help you build a church relationship can help you build a church listen money as you know naira and cobalt dollars pounds yen these things are not the only means of exchange relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things there are many ignorant people who want to be successful but they do not know the law of relationships so they have to look for money to pay for everything you ask them and they tell you i need five million i need ten million whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for there are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and he entered free are we together now there are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent there are people who have had to pay for everything in life. Listen, if you use money to buy everything in life, you are not wise. No. It is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life. It has nothing to do with being rich. That's the mistake our parents made. I love our parents don't get me wrong some of you here are parents we love you we honor you with all our hearts most people think you only succeed when you start having salary hundred thousand coming and they now say wow i have hundred thousand then they have a need they ignore relationships and something that would be cheaply paid for they would have to look for money and pay for it I have paid for many things in my life using relationship. Relationship like a debit card. You can use it and withdraw many other things. You can use it and pay for many other things. Relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms. I am connected to people. Listen, connectivity is a key to success you must be connected relationships can help you access anointings relationships can help you access endorsements relationships can help you access favor 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 the major ingredient in success is favor but it takes relationships We have come 
with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC. We have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances. I'm not talking about finances necessarily, but I'm just using it as a case study. Relationships. People have blessed me today purely based on relationships. Not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of God. Just to bless. Do you know that somebody in Zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what i'm saying now somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship during my birthday people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes i I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done. that I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. Relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you to enter there. Many of us have been trivializing relationships. That's why we keep hustling. The Bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them. He does not know the road to the city. By the grace of God, I understand the ministry of destiny helpers. The ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship. God has used me as a destiny helper to many. God has used many people as destiny helpers to me. Hallelujah cheap victories that many of us lose cheap victories some of our parents do not know anybody and so you pay for everything and when you want to use money alone to be successful a day will come you will have all the money in your life and you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do are we together there are people you know one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that I've learned from my father. My father is a man who was wealthy in relationships. I used to think he was just, you know, you know, just someone who just likes people. But now that I've grown, I have seen the wisdom. 
relationship paid many bills for my father relationships let me tell you something relationship is an investment the same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship all this something for nothing is, is a joke there are many of us we have this self flattery they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text messages as if you will die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day a need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly i say are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy and you miss my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man 
old listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one old oh, ah promise where are you I'm, I'm i'm trusting god for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense and say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one trouser 200 naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise 
you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say I, I prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I i love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, don't, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom I show you the life of God versus the principles of God. Are we together? There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. There is no day. I say it, may God forgive me if I'm lying, but it's true. There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me you cook by yourself you wash your clothes by yourself you intercede for yourself no relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you are looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age we're not thinking like them that means most likely they'll be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price 
to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and you say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since <laughs> i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we're about leaving be that today and a man of god who also came for administration the man of god came for administration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for administration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seat in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter I have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray I will stop here no one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will come
cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody is pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it paid me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to us to go and scrub toilet if you can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere cut them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i'd like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank god open your mouth and say god thank you you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys 
You're revealing to me the keys. You're revealing to me the keys. Let me tell you something. Come be God. Many of you don't know this gentleman. You see this guy? This guy would never fail in life. Ask me why. Because when we started, listen carefully. When he and I started, the time we used to meet in the campus and sit on his lap. And this gentleman, the same way he's holding his guitar. That's how he, he was a person who was holding the guitar and playing and he will, everybody usually will be seated when it's time to preach. But he will have to stand with me. There's another dear lady, she was the one who would hold light for me. That's her work. She did it joyfully. Bring her touch light. Every time I was going to read a scripture, she would do it joyfully. Those two people will never, never beg for bread. Not when I'm alive. Yes, no, 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 it's not amen. It's, it's a reality. I'm serious about it. I can mention names of people. I told you about my principal who I went to visit early this year and I looked at him. He had become an old man now. And I said, God, in my lifetime, please let me build a house for this man and buy a car for him and bless him with a seed that brings tears from his eyes before he goes to me. It's a covenant I made with myself. What did he do? He believed in me. I remember seeing me as a young boy and he looked at me and said, you are smart. He had a little keyboard and he called me to come and sit down. And I had come from a background of so much complex and pain. He made the entire school to gather in front of me and he said I should play keyboard for them. And that was the beginning of the healing process for inferiority that today nations are getting blessed from. I was not born this way. Never forget those who believed in you when you were nothing. You see, let me tell you something about greatness. As you start rising, levels will change. Don't let your mind change. Because you will start seeing psychophants. People who you meet on the journey. And they are there to make it look like at your level. Should you now be relating with these ones? This woman used to sweep your house. Now you have become a big woman. You are even going to marry a millionaire. Just find 2,000 and let her go away. Please, this smelly woman, not your class. A wise person will say, if she could sweep my house when I had nothing, she deserves to sweep my palace. She even deserves a palace of her own. Relationships. Anything money can buy, relationship can buy it. You have been paying for too many things using finances. Start using relationships. Lift your voice and cry. Because God bless my Lord. Lift your voice and say, Lord, connect me. Connect me. Connect me. Pray. Connect me. Shato Salaka de Bregadia. Shepherd of Salabakaria. I know our time is gone, but pray. I'm handing to you keys that will make your life remarkable. Man of God, pray for relationship. Strategic relationships, covenant relationships. Pray. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take away the spirit of offense because offense is the killer of relationships. Hear me. Your friends will never be perfect people, just like you are not. There are many of you, you're, you're sad. You can never have a friend for two weeks and not talk about A to B and talk about B to C. It's a devilish attitude. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take that attitude out of my life. Bitterness on offense. Grace to forbear. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my destiny friend. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my valuable friends. Pray. 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 Pray.
Pastor Femi used to be the one to carry equipment for Washington. This Washington, you see. He was, he would carry the equipment and sit down in Rema Chapel. They would finish rehearsal. He would help to close and God was watching. God was watching. Foolish people were saying you are wasting time. Why are you human worship? And God was watching. God does not lift proud people. God leads those who can serve with their heart and their life. Gradually, gradually, occasionally he would play bass guitar, humble himself. Even when he became a pastor, there were times he was playing bass guitar. One day I had to tell him, no, it's okay. The person assisting him now, Francis, Francis is a friend of Charles. Francis was in protocol. Look at how God is lifting people except you. God is lifting people except you because pride has still kept you where you are. Big money sin. There are people who humble themselves to serve. There are people in this ministry. The level of grace they have, they can be geos of great ministries. Yet you see them doing very frail activities. Some of them are in protocol, running around. He resisted the proud. He gives grace to the humble. You see what God has done in his life today. God bless you. Aaron, come. Let me give you. Come, Aaron. Many of you do not know that the first person who was the protocol of UNI was Aaron. This gentleman you see standing here. When we were doing crusades, nothing to write home about. Owing everybody everywhere. Just moving by faith. It was Aaron who was in charge of logistics and buses. I remember shouting at them and pushing them and all of these things. This guy you see. You know. Yet till today, the way he is, you still see him greet some of the leaders. Some of these people are young. They are younger than him by far in age. Younger than him in experience and all of that. And you see him still act. And where there is an opportunity, you see him serve with all his heart. Aaron is one person who has served me and served God with his life and I've made a vow and a covenant no matter what happens, I will never watch him and his children beg for bread. Thank you, Aaron. I love you. Question. A few years from now, who is going to call you? Do you know a Jimmy's wife, this lady you see, as of 2010, she was a member of protocol. Protocol, when we're doing Kingdom Well Summit. Had not married her husband yet. Protocol. Serving with all her heart. Establishing quality relationships. Today, look at their children. All copying what the parents are doing. You are allowing time to pass. God is sending strategic people to your life. You insult everybody who is not you. You are out to look for imperfections. This lady is too loud. This person is too this. It is true they have those issues. But can you ignore it and see that God is connecting you with a ladder that will wipe your tears forever? Our parents ignored it. And today they keep frowning at televisions when they see their colleagues. Pray in one minute. Open my eyes to see those who are my destiny helpers. Open my eyes to see the relationship I must protect at all costs. Open my eyes, oh God, to see the relationship. Not all relationships are worth keeping. Not all relationships are worth protecting. But I tell you, there are relationships that are worth keeping forever. Hallelujah. 
Let me give you an assignment. As you go back home today or tomorrow, go and write the list of the five most valuable relationships in your life and begin to invest unashamedly in them. Five people that God has brought in your life that you know you need no matter what it is. You don't have to invest in everybody. There are people after 20 years is still a waste. But let me tell you, there are relationships you must protect at all costs. Some of us are penny wise and pound foolish. We can destroy today or try to enjoy today. We destroy a relationship that is long lasting. I have seen people, I have counseled people who destroyed relationships with great people over trivial matters. Matters of marriage, matters of money, matters of job, matters of reputation, matters of ego. Bro, great relationships with people. I know great men today who have vowed in my presence that they will never help certain people because of their attitude. Last prayer. Father, give me the grace to be friendable. Give me the grace to be relatable. May my life not drive people away. May my words not drive people away. May my attitude not drive people away. May my sense of resentment against people not drive them away. Pray. Success system. Success system. The mysteries that have been responsible for your common life, your common needs that is in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Look up. We are rounding up now. Some of you need to call your parents tomorrow and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call your siblings and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call maybe some people in your department. Even as workers in this house. Some of you need to say, look, I'm tired of this. I can't be fighting everybody. Master the art of celebrating people. That's one of the keys of relationship. Master the art of lavishly and truly celebrating people. Ah, Marcelina, you have a lovely voice. Amaka, you have a lovely voice. Ah, empty, you are playing well. Don't just say what is special. You see, the moment you trivialize people's worth, they run away from you. That's why you never see me talk about any man of God and try to show that I am higher. No, 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 no. You hardly even see me call any of these my people, my son, my this. It's still a heaviness in my spirit. Don't resent people to show you are higher. No. Celebrate people. Our children come here after service. You see me hug them and appreciate them with all my heart. You come here whether I know you or not. I'm shaking you, I'm greeting you, I'm hugging you. After service, I tell you, hug one another. Some of you just pull your mouth and you are going straight to the boss. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, are, you can add 10 years of pain to your life by ignoring one person. Father, I pray for your people tonight in the name of Jesus. You are revealing to us success systems that will bring us into uncommon dimensions of triumph. I pray, oh God, that every spirit of bitterness that is in anyone here that is responsible for driving valuable people, may that spirit live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God will give you the unashamedness to invest in profitable relationships. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will have at least two to three valuable people in your life that you can call friends in me. And I declare and declare that every wrong attitude that you have portrayed that has driven great people from your life, I declare a restoration for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, I command a reconnection for you with the great and valuable people who will lift you to the next level. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Put your hands together for Jesus and please keep standing. Please keep standing. Please keep standing. Our time is gone.
But I just want to perform two functions very quickly. Number one, I want to make an altar call. Why do we do this every time? We do this because there is somebody who needs to have a relationship with Jesus. We are talking about the law of relationships. There are some of you outside. The first relationship you need a connection with and two is Jesus Christ. You will never succeed in life outside of him. You may have been coming around. Some of you are outside. Some of you are online. Some of you were invited. You heard me speak. You are hearing me speak again. And the Lord is telling you, I need a relationship with you. I want to build your life. Some of you need a reconnection. That connectivity has been broken. Wherever you are, please, I will count one to four very quickly. Don't wait for anybody to come. Take a bold step and make your way out here right now. One, quickly, please appreciate them as they come. I believe there are people here and there. If you are coming, please come. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Please run and come. Two. I'm counting one to four. God bless you. God bless you. You can stand on your feet, please. Those outside, keep coming. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's a reconnection. Man of God, I need this relationship. I don't want my life to be a failure. He said, he who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Keep coming. Three. God bless you. Don't be ashamed of him. He's the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your courage. If you're coming, still join them quickly. Quickly, I see people coming. Our mother is coming. God bless you, Mama. Please come and join them quickly. Let's appreciate our mother. God bless you. Bless you. Now, I want you to lift your right hand, all of you in front. Lift your right hand and mean it seriously. We're out of time. But then don't make a joke of it. It's a supernatural experience. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare that my heart belongs to Jesus. I surrender to you totally, completely. I ask that my sins be forgiven. See, the power of God is even on you as you are praying. I receive the life of God right now and I declare that I'm a child of God from today my sins are forgiven I have a new beginning I declare that I'm reconnected back to the source of my life Jesus Christ Amen and Amen Father receive these ones I pray in the name of Jesus that you will take them from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that you honor their decisions and I pray, oh God, that this will be forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much for coming. There's a gentleman waving his hands. All of you are likely to just move in concert and you will meet him. They will direct you, give you a few details and communicate a few things. Let's honor them very quickly. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.